Hi, welcome to tonight's Google Hangout. Coming to you live from Euler Nation. We are here to talk about sonography, and we've got a whole group of panelists in front of you tonight. And before we get into anything, I want to let everyone know that you can ask all your questions live. There is a little box beneath the video that you're watching. Go ahead and ask us any questions you'd like. And you can also tweet all of your questions at um, at Ufinley using the hashtag AskUF. Okay, so let's do a round of introductions and then we're going to talk about our topics and we're going to get right into things. Hello, my name is Michael Parrish. I'm the instructor and clinical coordinator for the echocardiography concentration and the sonography program here at the University of Finland. Hi, I'm Emily Vogel and I am a general student. I'm Katie Foote and I am in the echocardiography. I'm Stephanie Berman, and I'm in the Vascular Sonography Program. Great. All right, our, uh, our topics tonight are going to include why sonography and why Finley. We're going to do an overview of the sonography programs. We're going to talk about what is to be expected when starting out in the program. We're going to talk hands-on, and then we're going to do, do a little Q&A, and we got some good answers coming to you. So. Let's get it started. So why sonography? As a high school student looking into this program, why should I, why should I go into sonography? Um, it's a lot of patient care. And it's one of the only imaging modalities where you are actually doing it live. And so you don't just put a patient in a machine and scan them. You're actually doing the scanning yourself. So. It's also a very fast growing field. The job outlook is very high. So that was awesome. I think that she is very right with that. It is a, uh, a field that has a higher than expected job growth over the next couple of years. And uh, there are many different job opportunities besides just working in your normal hospital. So there's a lot for students to look forward to after getting the degree here. Great. So we got the program down now. Why Finley? Why would you choose Finley to come here and study sonography? I personally like the program because it's more of a fast track. Once you um, are finished with all your prerequisites, you are just in the sonography program itself. And you also get a lot more clinical hours here than you do with some of the other universities around. So I think that's important because it's good to have more of a hands-on experience. Just in the program alone, you get a lot of hands-on experience that you wouldn't get at a lot of other colleges to do. And I think the University of Finley offers uh, some opportunities to the students not afforded uh, elsewhere. Uh, we have a wonderful lab space for the students to work with, which you guys see in the background behind us. Uh, we also offer the students a chance to partner with our anatomy and physiology department and uh, get some hands-on time. In the cadaver lab uh, if wanted because I think it's important not only to uh, scan the stuff on live patients but actually get hands-on to uh, relate the different structures to each other in kind of more of a three-dimensional aspect so outstanding so you guys hit the nail on the head the the hands-on learning and the lab space we're going to talk about that in just a second but let, let's talk about the the actual programs itself sonography is made up of uh, you know, three different programs, and we have all the programs represented here tonight. So let's let's talk about these programs a little bit. Yeah, we have we have three different concentrations in sonography, uh, two uh, different de degree tracks for each of those concentrations. So students can pursue either associate's or bachelor's degree here at the University of Finley uh, in either general sonography, echocardiography, or vascular sonography. Um, and I'll let each of the girls here tell you a little bit about each of the concentrations. So, so I'm in the general program. That means that um, it's for the babies, the fun part that most people think about. But um, it's a lot more than that. I also look at the thyroid, the liver, gallbladder, aorta, IBC, basically anything in the abdomen I will be able to scan. So, For echo, we do the heart. So it's your organ. This is what keeps you alive. It's extremely interesting, extremely complex, and I can't even tell you what I've learned just in the past couple of months that I've been here, what it does. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, I'm in the vascular program, and I do the arteries and veins throughout the body. Um, 
up into close to the head and all the way down to the feet. Does it just blow your mind when you, you're scanning someone and you can actually see what is happening in that very moment? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And everybody's different. So when you scan yeah. different people, it's a new experience every time. Because things, it doesn't look the same on everybody. So. That's a great point. Yeah. So starting out in the program, uh, what, what's to be expected? Is there anything to expect besides you're going to be scanning someone? or You have to be very dedicated to enter the program. It's very intense. It's a lot of work. It's extremely rewarding. A lot of fun. You definitely have to be dedicated. Mm -hmm. And I think what the students are referring to are the specific design that we came up with here at the University of Finley where we front load all the students coursework for sonography in general into one semester, which would normally be stretched out over two years. Um, when a student first enters, whether they're doing associates or bachelors, they would they would have uh, a normal uh, college path where they complete all their prerequisites before actually entering, entering the program. And it's their senior or final year here on campus that they actually come into the sonography program here. And once you're in the sonography program, like I said, it is very, uh, very intense. Um, the students are here um, almost as a full-time job, uh, usually four days a week for about eight hours out of the day. Uh, we do a lot of hands-on learning back and forth between labs and classroom. Uh, but I think in the end, it's gonna be worth it once they get out into the clinical aspect and when they start to do their hands-on, they already have all that information they need to build upon. I feel already a lot more comfortable than I did when I first walked in here. <laughs> yeah, you'll be amazed how much you learn in such a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. so, you, so you guys kept saying it's intense, but it's fun at the same time. G give me a typical day. Run, run me through a typical day through each, each program. Usually there's some type of um, lecture that could end up being two to four hours, and then there might anywhere be um, from two to three more hours of, of scanning time on top of that. And that's the hands-on hands piece, yeah. yeah, okay. And it is about the same, same. for the other two, it okay. It is about the same through all the concentrations as far as the or makeup of the class slash uh, interactive learning part of the session, so. All right, so the hands-on, like that's a huge, huge part and you can see uh, behind you guys is is everything that is hands-on. I mean, it's like walking into the doctor's office or the clinical that you are studying in, and it's, it's oh, I know this stuff. It's familiar to me, right? So take me through the hands-on experience. How, how detailed is that? I think with testing, it's very detailed because when you take an exam here, you also do what we call competency. And it is basically like you are getting a real patient. They bring in somebody, and you have to go out into the waiting room and get them. You go through all of the patient history questions, and then they give you a list of images, and you actually go through and you complete an exam on somebody, and that's part of the testing here. And so that was helpful for me because I get nervous sometimes when I have mm -hmm. to do that for the first time. And so it was really nice to be able to do it here where I feel more comfortable before I have to go out into clinic and actually do a real patient. So it's like it's live. It's like yeah. a typical day at the office almost. Yeah. yeah. That's a great yeah. point. She, uh, you know, being at the University of Finland, we have a lot of students across campus who would love to volunteer and get to see their different organs with inside the body. So we bring in a lot of outside um, patients to work with. Uh, which gives them a lot of variety in their scanning, so that we're not just scanning the same thing over and over and over again. And uh, I think it's very dynamic and allows you guys to uh, get past that nervous barrier once you get out of the clinic. So. so, so run down the lab space for me. I, I see, you know, that there's a divider in the background, but we have we have some pretty large lab spaces. Right, we have. Uh, the University of Finley has been very generous. They renovated 3,000 square foot of lab space uh, for the program. Um, bought us six brand new ultrasound systems, which you guys can see in the background, uh, Philips Epic 5s, uh, which were just released a year ago. So 
state-of-the-art equipment. Um, we have a brand new core vascular uh, vascular machine for new vascular students to work with uh, for arterial studies. And I think um, the students so far have been impressed, <clears throat> excuse me, with the equipment, especially when you look at what we get to see in lab versus some of these older studies that we show you guys in class, you can notice a real difference in what you guys are actually getting to work with and experience in your time here at the University of Yeah. All right. Well, we always get a lot of questions uh, coming into any program. And just to kind of give a general overview and do a little Q&A here, let's jump into what the program might be looking for in a student. Or maybe a better question is, what can the student do in those first three years to prepare themselves to come into the program? I would definitely recommend going into a hospital to observing if you're interested in doing this. Um, you get kind of a feel for what you would be doing on a typical day. And it could change your perspective one way or the other. So you get made it solid, this is what I want to do. I think it's amazing. Um, so I think it's important to actually see it. Good point. Observation is something that is required of the students anyways before entering some the program. Um, definitely if this is some a track that they want to go down, uh, it's recommended. Usually um, we have students come and volunteer over in the lab whenever they get to the university. That helps them get some experience with the students that are currently in their final year of sonography uh and gives them a more uh, broader perspective of what the profession does uh, as well so it helps just to define because we get so many students that are like hey i want to do ultrasound but i'm not real sure if i want to do vascular or general um, and that can really make a difference in your decision uh, as to which one you go into. while the students are here on campus are they able to come into the classroom and actually see what the students are doing yes before they become a student Right. We, we highly recommend that. Um, we have lists over in our office, which uh, we allow people to sign up to volunteer to work with the students in the lab. Um, and we highly recommend that our students, uh, when they are doing their first three years, actually volunteer and come over and get involved with that. Um, we also have some student organizations, which I know we'll talk about in a little bit, for the students to get involved in as well. So. Excellent. And playing off that student organization, a little bit more on the sports side of things. Can you be a sonography student and also be involved in a in a sport? Yeah, uh, I, I know the girls talked about how intense the program was, uh, and it is for the final year. But the first three years, as we stated, uh, you finish prerequisites as any other normal college student will do, um, which allows uh, for students to be involved in four-year sports. <coughs> if they like, and we can do some creative things too. We run classes in the fall and in the spring. So if a student had a fall sport um, that they would prefer to concentrate solely on the sport, uh, they could go ahead and finish that and not start the sonography courses until the uh, January and then actually finish up more towards the December rather than May with the, the uh, first group of students. Uh, can any of you three imagine playing a sport? Again? <laughs> It's it's doable. It, it just know that it you know it's and it takes quite a bit of commitment. But uh, I know athletes are usually very dedicated uh, for both academics and athletics. So. Yeah. All right. So the, the student organizations here on campus. I mean, obviously, you need some something of a life that is outside of the classroom or the lab, as well. So. <laughs> Student organiz are you guys a part of any student organizations currently? We're just starting one right. now. Okay. So I'm assuming we will all, yeah. I will be a part of one day. Okay. Yeah, we, we, uh, this group of students has actually been very fundamental in starting up the uh, student organization course, which I believe is known as the Sound Squad, um, <laughs> which uh, all these students uh, will probably be joining, I think, at least everyone I've talked to so far from this class. Um, and we don't uh, limit the students on joining other university organizations. Um, they're more than uh, willing to be involved with the university as much as possible. We are indeed a part of the University of Henley and not separate from the University of Henley. So we, we like to make sure that our students get involved with student life. Absolutely. So let's hit on 
some of the things that maybe a high school student should start thinking about now, uh, whether they're a junior or senior, um, still in high school, still able to make, make a difference starting out in their college career, moving into sonography. What, what, what would you give a high school student as far as advice on how to prepare to move into this program? Definitely, I think most of the sonography programs in the state of Ohio are very um, competitive as far as entrance, so you definitely want to focus on your academics. There's no courses that are special courses you need to take in order to receive acceptance uh, into the University of Finley or into the sonography program. Um, all that will be prepared for in your first three years at the university. But definitely, as the girls mentioned earlier, it's, it's a wise decision to go observe at a hospital somewhere. Most hospitals are more than willing to have students who are interested in, in their profession come and, and observe for a couple hours just to get a feel for um, what the job entails and whether or not it's really something that you are interested in. But we're definitely looking for any students who are dedicated, um, into the interest of healthcare, um, helping people. Um, anything else you else can add to that? Yeah, that, yeah. That, yeah. I, I think that sounded great. <laughs> so the application process, you touched on that a little bit. When When's ideal for a student to get that application in? Um, they can apply to the sonography program um, as soon as they've been accepted into the University of Finley. Again, we don't recommend that you start any of your sonography courses till your final year. Um, so you really don't have to apply to the sonography program till your junior year, um, but you can apply as a freshman if you know for sure this is what I want to do, this is, this is where I'm going with my life. And um, that, uh, helps us then to switch you to one of us as your advisor, one of these sonography faculty members. Um, so we can help just direct and make sure you're on the correct path to accomplish all your goals. The last question I have here is the, the type of career that you can expect to walk into while you have a sonography degree. There's a lot, as I've learned. <laughs> it's not just all standing. Yeah. Just teaching. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I was. I mean, I was a sonographer in my former career uh, in the Central Ohio area. Um, I've had a number of roles in sonography. I've also worked um, for companies doing applications, specialist, uh, more of a marketing slash sales type role. Um, there's research positions available. You got your uh, hospitals, outpatient labs. Um, some of the younger students who are less tied down like to do the traveling. Um, mm -hmm. There's traveling positions where you can go work uh, in different states for short periods of time. Um, a number of different things. It's really uh, management. Um, how much time do you uh, what do you guys want to get into once you once you get through clinicals and you're done? What what type of position do you see yourself walking into? or that dream job maybe? I'm just looking forward to doing the vascular sonography. I'll be trained to do it for now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think most of them probably, usually for a student starting off, a hospital or outpatient is generally where they, they start their career. At. Most start their career there, but then kind of branch off from there. So I think patient care is very rewarding. It's something we have to experience in the profession before, before going on. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, we're going to wrap things up. We, I don't see any questions that have come in, and we've hit through all the topics and gone through all the questions here, so we're going to wrap it up here at Euler Nation. Thank you all for joining us. If you have any questions or any anything you would like to ask our, our panelists, you can reach us at, at UFinley using the hashtag AskUF. And you can also email the program directly. So from Euler Nation, good night. Thanks, everyone. Bye.